Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and good morning to our friends on the West Coast. Welcome to our presentation on how to make your hiring process predictive and pain-free, integrating a pre-hire assessment with your applicant tracking system. We'll cover the challenges of a typical ATS integration and discuss how to, how to get up and running faster with less downtime so your teams can make better, more efficient hiring decisions. Brought to you today by Outmatch, leaders in transforming the world of work. My name is Charles Summers. It is my pleasure to be serving as your moderator during this hour. If you'd like to get in touch with me about future webinar topics, outmatch specific information, or if you'd like to speak with one of our many talent experts, reach out by email at csummers at outmatch.com or just chat in your comments. The Outmatch platform delivers a highly predictive talent selection software platform that supports hiring, development, and culture management decisions by employ using employment assessments and analytics. Through the platform, we will transform your workplace by infusing data and predictive models into your talent strategy, ultimately reducing turnover, strengthening culture, and driving company performance. As Outmatch's capabilities continue to grow, we'd like you to grow with us. So when you have a chance, head to the website, check out all of our expert resources, sign up for a future webinar, and get the full scoop on Outmatch and Pomelo products by scheduling a tour at outmatch.com backslash schedule a demo. As a thank you for joining us today, all attendees will receive a free copy of our popular ebook, the, the Essential Guide to Predict, uh, Predictive Analytics, which has everything you'll need to know to, or you need to know to understand predictive analytics and start using predictive analytics as part of your talent strategy. If you'd like a recording from today's presentation, please email me at csummers at outmatch.com or go to outmatch.com backslash webinars to find all of our on-demand webinars. At this time, please take a moment to follow Outmatch on social media at OutmatchHCM and tweet your questions, thoughts, or quotes as you're listening by using the hashtag OutmatchInsights. You can also interact with us using the questions queue in your GoToWebinar status window. Please feel free to ask questions, make comments, or share feedback at any point during the webcast. Again, you can also tweet questions or comments to at OutmatchHCM with the hashtag OutmatchInsights. The feature presentation will take approximately 30 minutes, and following that, we'll have some time set aside for a Q&A session with our panelists. Now, I'd just like to introduce our, our panel host, uh, Stacy Smeal. Stacy's role is to understand the needs of consumers in the HR technology market and help develop products to meet those needs. She conducts market research, generates functional requirements, develops production timetables, and informs uh, on pricing strategy and more. So at this time, I'd like to hand it off to Stacy. Stacy, take it away. All right, thanks Charles. Um, and thank you for having me here today. The first thing I'd like to do is introduce our internal outmatch experts uh, who will be our panelists today for our integration discussion. We have Alicia Seeger, who is our director of people and culture. Alicia is responsible for everything related to the people side of the business. We're talking from recruitment and onboarding through to benefits and all of our cultural initiatives as well. So she works with HR systems and tools on a daily basis. And here today, she'll be able to provide some firsthand insight into what it looks like uh, to work with multiple HR tools and how that relates to the world of ATS integration. Now we also have Tim Thomas and Victoria Rose, who are two client engagement managers here at Outmatch. Um, our client engagement managers are really value advocates that work closely with clients to build strong partnerships, share best practices, and ensure that our clients are achieving their desired results. So Tim and Victoria have a great deal of experience supporting clients through the ATS integration process and have several success stories as well as lessons learned that they can share with us here today. All right, so quickly, before we dive into the panel discussion, let's take a step back and look at the evolution of HR technology, because this evolution is really the reason that integration is at the forefront of our minds and discussions in HR today. And if you've been in the HR space for a while, then you've seen this progression firsthand. Um, <clears throat> there was an explosion of HR technology that began in the early 1990s. And immediately following this explosion were waves of rapid innovation and consolidation that continues on until today. Um, so of course the evolution of HR technology mirrors the evolution of HR itself. 
and reflects a lot of the human resource initiatives and the shift in strategy from being process focused to more people focused, which we're seeing today. So as we just mentioned, the big, uh, the big wave of talent management technology came in the 90s. And up to this point, HR technology was predominantly focused on record keeping and payroll processing. Uh, but with this technological boom of the 90s, it really kick-started a movement towards automation. Um, this really meant that HR teams were starting to be freed up from the manual, administrative, and resource-heavy tasks that are involved in talent management. This automation enabled huge gains in efficiency, but what we realized is companies were quickly growing tired of managing products from seven or eight different vendors. And that's when the integration of systems really became essential. So moving on to the next slide, this is a sense of where we are today, where we see a rich landscape of HR systems and tools. Uh, and really the HR technology market is not slowing down. In fact, according to Gartner, um, the HR technology market is only gonna continue growing by about 10% annually through the year 2020. Um, so now it's the perfect time for you all to become an expert or experts in HR data integration. So let's, uh, let's actually pull the audience here. If you can go to your GoToWebinar window and access that, that poll dropdown, we have a couple of questions for you here. The first question that we have, how many different pieces of HR software do you use in your organization today? We'll give you a couple of minutes to respond. Um, this helps to kind of orient the audience to what other attendees uh, are facing, and this also helps to orient our panelists to the type of experience that you all have. All right, we'll give it another moment here to allow people to put in their responses. Okay, we'll go ahead and close this poll. All right, and as we can see, um, results. Yep, as we can see with the results, uh, we're all across the board here. So we have the predominant um, percentage of our attendees using between one and three systems um, and a pretty even split between individuals who are not using multiple pieces of HR software and individuals that have more than three. Um, so the information that we'll cover on this webinar today is going to be relevant to all of these categories, so stay tuned. All right, we have one more question here to dig into for the attendees. Uh, how would you describe the most recent experience you had doing an ATS integration? And certainly our, our client, val uh, client value advocates in the room here today will be able to speak to all sorts of experiences that they've shared with clients going through these processes. Go ahead and think about this, put in your results, and we'll close the poll in just a moment here. All right, great. So looking at the results here, we do see uh, an overwhelming response of individuals saying that the process was overly complicated or time intensive. Um, also, a good number of you have not been involved in an ATS integration process, but may be curious about what to expect. Again, we'll be able to deliver you helpful information regardless of the situation that you're in, whether you're considering integration or you currently have one. All right, so let's dig into the expertise that we have in the room. Um, panelists, our first question for you, we have all of these conversations and considerations around integration, but how important is integration really? Um, and to kick things off, maybe I'll pass it off to Tim. Yeah, thank you, Stacy. So it was interesting to see the poll there. And so for a lot of organizations, right, an applicant tracking system is the backbone of your recruiting organization and maybe even a primary system of record. So whether it's importing or exporting data, uh, searching for information, segmenting data by tags, and if, if you've been part of a recruiting team, you know exactly what I'm referring to. Whether it's collaborating with your team, mass messaging to candidates, managing workflows, interviews, et cetera. Um, so from a recruiter, HR, or hiring manager perspective, you wanna be able to have those teams work on a very highly productive capacity. Uh, so if the process on the front end of hiring candidates breaks down, you run into delays. 
ultimately resulting in a multitude of risks, such as being understaffed, low quality of candidates, we can, we can name a whole bunch. So integrating with an ATS allows you to quicken that flow of information and further ease the time burden uh, for your team, essentially by automating screening uh, once the applicant, applicant reaches a certain point in, in that process. Uh, the benefit you provide is making the screening more automated and robust. Um, the other thing that uh, integration eliminates is duplicate data entry and the, and the need to export information across systems while making the process more secure, essentially by really keeping it all in one single process. Uh, this really makes the backbone you provide more secure, improves the experience uh, of, of end users. Uh, with integration, it really becomes uh, a one-stop shop. And this is Victoria. I want to piggyback as well that I absolutely agree with all of that. Uh, and I guess it's important for the audience, since they'll more than likely hear about this a few times throughout this panel, that my background is primarily in selection, recruitment, and candidate experience. So, it, Tim, you are speaking my language when you talk about making recruiting and screening processes really seamless, saving hours for talent acquisition, moving between multiple systems and getting their candidates across the finish line. But I also think it goes a lot further than that when you think about HR technology and tying the whole candidate employee lifecycle together. If you think about what happens after a candidate accepts that offer, there's background checks, reference checks, transferring candidate data to employee onboarding and HRIS systems, integrating payroll, benefits, talent management, development, engagement surveys. There are so many moving parts, and those can often, and I would say most times, are different partners or technologies that you're integrating with one ATS or with, um, with your HRIS. So it really touches so much in the ongoing human resources, human capital, learning and development, people and culture, talent acquisition spaces for organizations both large and small. Even more so if you have cross-functional departments involved with any number of those areas. So I think the original uh, question was how important integration is, and I, I, I think it's apparent it's pretty important. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you both have, have provided a great deal of information, you know, from the immediate gains earned from being able to move candidates more quickly through the process and give recruiters the information they need through to consolidating big data and being able to connect the data points for your employees. That's very insightful. Um, and, you know, a key question that we have as our number two for our panelists here, um, this may speak directly to the heart of some of our attendees. Why do integrations take so long? Uh, Victoria, I know that you actually have some experience with this. Maybe you can lead us off. Yeah, so it's funny seeing the responses from the poll. Uh, many of you said it was overly complicated and that it takes a long time. So when I think about integrations, and of course this can depend on the type of technology you're integrating or the area, again, of that candidate employee life cycle, but I really think about change management. So regardless of company size, type of technology, chances are the new integration that is being implemented is going to impact several different areas of the business and it's gonna require communications, rollout strategies, training for recruiters, hiring managers, people managers, and so on. And even if you've had this certain type of technology before, the nuances, the look and feel, and overall process may be changing. So this is where the human resources and talent acquisition leadership really has to be prepared for change management, communications, and that whole piece can really impact the overall timeline of getting two technologies integrated with one another. So you talk about change management, and, and certainly change management can be a, a big factor, uh, especially since, since we, we are talking about applicant tracking systems moving between ATSs, right? So um, this is, I feel like this is certainly a, a loaded question why, as to why integrations take so long. So I, I come from a project management background. Uh, as a project manager, that's something that you're always worried about, about keeping the project on scope, on timeline, on budget. Um, and you're always worried about your scope changing. So scope creep is something that if you're a project manager, you always worry about. Considering if you're an agile type of, uh, environment scope creep can be a good thing however managing scope right 
Uh, I think almost everyone would raise their hands if they said, hey, you started off the project with a particular scope, and then midway through the project, things change. Um, and then all of a sudden your timeline is affected, your budget is, uh, is affected. So uh, the big thing here is kind of going back to change management and what it looks like uh, when you're involved in that type of big project, right? Uh, it certainly takes time to coordinate between different resources between you and the, the ATS partner that you're working with. And, and employers often purchase several solutions for their HR needs. Um, whether it's to source candidates, uh, conduct uh, background checks, uh, perform assessments, uh, uh, and collect references. So setting up strong integrations between these solutions can sometimes, or very often, can be a very disjointed experience. And we all know not all integrations are created equal. It would be awesome if it was. However, it's not. Essentially, um, an integration shouldn't just be checking the box, right? It should enhance speed, transparency, and collaboration. Um, so that that's just a few of the things that could make integrations long. We could probably go through a whole laundry list of things, but I will stop there. Yeah. So basically, you know, what I'm hearing is the integrations take so long because the road to automation is actually a very, very careful planning process. Um, it could involve two or more systems you know being affected and it's going to depend on what you know data is being leveraged by each department and what information they need to be transferred from one system to another um, very helpful information so as we launch into the next question i actually want to share um, a data point that i've gotten from captera where uh, we've learned that 75 percent of hiring and talent managers use either an applicant tracking system or some type of recruiting software to improve their hiring process so let's assume that you know we have an individual that's got an ats set up and they're curious what is the typical process of integrating a new system with an ats what does that look like um victoria you want to take this one yeah so I want to talk both about what I've experienced uh, and also some of the typical process for um, your case of someone who's exploring what integrations look like. Uh, so typically, if you are integrating with an, a new HR technology partner uh, and you are scoping that out, one thing I've observed that happens is that this, during that scoping phase, integration can be left to some of the later stages of conversations. So what I've seen as a particular leader or an organization itself really falls in love with an HR technology provider. That's for the obvious things like the product and the pricing, as well as the client support, the people that work, that they will be working with, as well as that HR technology's long-term fit with their strategy. Then what happens is a bit of a surprise or perhaps being caught off guard when integration does come into the conversation at later stages. And it's, let's just say, it's not always the easiest or most seamless process, which we've been hinting out throughout this panel discussion. Um, <clears throat> so from here, organizations will enter conversations around development pipelines, project plans, rollout timelines that are impacted from both the client side, competing priorities, other projects that you have on your plate as you are researching integration options, but also can be impacted by the provider or the ATS's current integration pipeline as well. So ideally, the provider and the applicant tracking system already have a pre-configured integration that's gonna make that timeline really quick and easy. Uh, but you may run into uh, sort of a balancing act between marrying the three parties, timelines, and how those three are going to work together. So from a technical perspective, that can take some vetting and decision-making time as you work towards identifying the right provider and the integration. Once that's done, from a, te from a technical perspective, the project planning and logistics of integration can really kick off. So in your example, the person who's exploring those options, if they make a decision, they'll start looking at rec assignments, workflows, process planning, and again, going back to that change management piece of who's going to need to be involved and trained on what that integration is ultimately going to look like. Yeah. So the, the typical process, the main takeaway is communicate often and ask <laughs> questions early. 
Um, there are a lot of experts that are here to help you, whether it's you know your ATS provider or your vendors, um, even if you're working with Outmatch. Start those conversations early so we can uh, get everything set up and running for you. All right, let's move on to our next question. So what typically happens when you have to make an update in an integrated system? You know, for example, if a company has gone through a merger or um, you know, they're doing some redefining of their regions, what does that change process look like? Yeah, and I will be happy to jump in here again because I have some recent examples of doing this. So this is Victoria. Um, so of course, again, each integration is different and it depends on which technology you're talking about, right? But I'm so glad you brought up this question because I think it's really easy to look at an integration as a one-time project. And having been in the chair on both the client side as well as the provider side, once that integration is done, it's a big celebration. You're so excited that that integration has been complete. And there are going to be, on both a small and large scale, small nuances and updates that need to be made to that integration throughout the life cycle of that partnership. So thinking about a recent example um, and that I think we can all relate to, organizational change, um, job titles are changing, to your point, regions are changing, sales, uh, territories are being redistributed, which may change the job title. Um, <clears throat> so when you think about uh, that, that particular aspect of migrating back any changes through the integration, that can be as simple as a support ticket that may go to your applicant tracking system. That may be working with someone like Tim or I on the technology provider to get um, that change routed through the integration. Or depending on the scope of that, that can impact um, development work on the integration as well, depending on how the two systems talk to each other. So one of my clients recently had uh, changed a job title, changed the scope of a job, and that has the organizational impact, that has conversations that are being had internally, hierarchies are changing, all of these things that are impacting your day-to-day -day life as an HR professional, but also this other checklist of things. I've got to change the language in my job advertisements, in my requisitions, in offer letters, in the payroll system. I have to change this job title and all of that is ultimately going to route back potentially through an integration and you'll need to make that change. So again, uh, that can be either through a support ticket, that can be through working with your account rep or your account manager on the technology side, uh, or it may require some technical development as well. Yeah, so it sounds like depending on the type of change and the, the magnitude that this change is going to have on, on other documents or requisitions or even job titles, um, depending on that size of the change, it is something that through an integration, individuals can handle themselves. But oftentimes we also see scenarios, you know, it sounds like uh, where our partners are having to reach out to the, their ATS vendor or their assessment vendor um, to help those changes go into place. Because as we all know, things do not stay static in HR um, <laughs> and your systems should be able to keep up with you. Thanks for that, Victoria. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about um, the, the experience without an integration. Um, I'd actually like to pull Alicia into the conversation because I believe that uh, she knows a little bit about what it's like to work with separate systems and can give us some more information on what the recruiter or candidate experience is like when there is no integration. Thanks, Stacy. Hi, everybody. Well, I'm gonna focus immediately on the thing that is most precious to recruiters and that is time. We are always trying to get to the very best candidates as quickly as we possibly can to get them started through our processes. So when you have to go from application to application to application to gather all the information that you need for a hiring manager, it takes a lot of extra time. So having an integration with your assessments uh, into your ATS is just incredibly helpful. And 
the next thing is, is if, if, if your hiring managers are like the hiring managers at Outmatch, they maybe put that hiring manager hat on once or twice a year. They're not constantly in the ATS, in the assessment platform, like a recruiter is. And so they're not, um, they have to relearn how to use those, those two applications every time it's time to hire somebody new in their department. So the very best thing a recruiter can do is make sure that all the information is in just one place. And that place invariably ends up being the ATS. So you spend a tremendous amount of time kind of moving those reports manually from the assessment platform to the ATS, which of course, anything that you do manually is gonna open you up to making mistakes. Having an, uh, an integration automates everything. It ensures that the right candidate assessment is in the right candidate record with, within your ATS. And it really just uh, keeps everything clean and easy for your hiring manager. And also, when you have it integrated, um, it also makes for a better experience for your candidate. We all want our candidates to view our companies as, you know, really together and polished and tech savvy. We want to put our best foot forward with our candidates so the best candidates will be interested in coming to work for us. And having this integration in place is just another way to show those candidates that we've got it together and we know what we're doing. So Alicia, I think you 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 kind of stole the words out of my mouth, but I'll just reiterate. I was trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll reiterate maybe some of what you said and just maybe put a different uh, perspective to it. You know, I mentioned one stop shop earlier, and I think Alicia, what you were referring to is essentially that, right? From a from a recruiter's perspective, having to log into another system to view, say, an assessment, uh, could really be a disruption of their flow throughout their day, essentially making it that their day inefficient, maybe less productive. So think of a high volume type of role that you would, as a recruiter would need to gather uh, assessment results for, right? I bet um, as a recruiter, you probably multiple times throughout the day, you think, oh, it'd be so easier if I could just access all of these in just one system, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah, and, and on that point, how much does that really contribute to moving candidates along from a recruiter perspective without really looking at the ass assessment results? Because it's just too much work to do that, right? So maybe skipping a step, and then all of a sudden we're talking about affecting the quality of hire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, great insight. And so it's pretty clear from what uh, Tim and Alicia have, have said, the efficiencies that can be gained in time for the recruiters. Um, also, an important point that Alicia brought up is the benefit of the uh, to the candidates of having an integrated process. Their application process could potentially be much shorter. Um, just to provide you with another statistic that we got from Capterra, um, what we understand is about 60% of job candidates will quit an application process if it takes too long. Um, so, you know, aside from your recruiters being really happy with a new automated process and increased efficiency in their work week, your candidates will likely be much happier and you'll see an increase, uh, increase in completion rates potentially. All right, so um, we've been talking a lot about um, applicant tracking systems. In our next question, we want to focus a little bit more on assessments that are used for screening. Um, so to the panelists, we want to know what would the recruiter or candidate experience be like without an assessment in the process? Um, Alicia, if you want to start this one off, you might have some good insight for us. Uh, well, I'm right back to the start of my last answer, which is the name of the game for recruiters is speed. We are looking to get the very best candidates into the hiring managers for review as quickly as possible. And, you know, on the candidate side, we want to get back to our candidates and respond to them as quickly as possible because, especially as you all know in this tight labor market, um, being a responsive hirer 
or and, a, and somebody who reaches out to their candidates really quickly after receiving results of an assessment or an application is really important to holding on to those candidates because like Stacy said, if things take too long, you lose them. That assessment helps me to identify top quality candidates more quickly, speeds up the vetting process, and it allows me to um, get through that initial screening, understanding the very best questions to ask the candidates. So the vetting process is much more high quality, even at the recruiter level, that initial screening level that we go through when candidates first reach us. So it, it, it in a nutshell, just really helps me to better identify the best candidates and to more and to identify them more quickly. Yeah, and this is Victoria. I think to Alicia's point, with the candidate-driven market that we're in today and what we're facing as recruiters, again, the speed and ability to make decisions quickly on candidates as well with the guidance of an assessment, recommend or do not recommend, um, pursue this candidate, this candidate has high potential, having that to even further quicken that process is critical. Also, it's interesting to talk about candidates when we think about the assessment perspective because assessments can be so much more poised as a benefit to recruiters or to the company. Um, and, it's, and it's different to talk about assessments as they benefit candidates. Um, but it's actually really interesting because not having an assessment in place can actually make a really big impact on how a candidate perceives a company and their experience applying and interviewing with that company. So for example, if a candidate is applying for multiple jobs and notices that certain companies have a pre-employment assessment that asks questions um, about personality or culture fit, that can impact the way they think about how that company cares about their future employees. They care about selecting top talent and bringing people on board that they'll want to work with. That doesn't just mean they're getting assessed. It means their future coworkers and future managers are also highly important to that company. So candidates and assessments are probably enough of a topic for a totally separate panel, um, but I did want to make sure we touched on that and how that can impact uh, the perception of your organization. Yep, absolutely. The feedback from Alicia and Victoria is uh, very helpful here. So using, an ex uh, using a selection process that doesn't have an assessment, it, it bogs down the recruiters, right? You don't have that objective information up front. But from the candidate standpoint, as Victoria is saying, without an assessment, that application process might lack a bit of face validity. Uh, it might also show the values of the organization. Um, so very important points to consider. Thank you both for that. All right, we have uh, one last structured question before we start to uh, get to any of the questions that the audience may have shared with us. So the common theme, what we're hearing on the webinar today is that integrations are vital, you know, for the efficiency and for the future productivity of HR departments and entire organizations. However, they can be very, they can be very complicated. So my question to the panelists is how can new te technology, excuse me, make this easier? Yeah, this is Tim. I can jump in here. So I like to look at it from a process efficiency perspective and certainly been alluding to that all throughout this conversation. We know integration, having an integration saves time, increases efficiency, uh, but maybe something that from, especially from a leadership perspective, right? Having an integration, we know it saves time and efficiency, and that results in helping create a competitive edge for your organization because you are leveraging technology and making it work for you. And that's exactly uh, uh, the line of thought we have here at Outmatch. Uh, so with, when, when setting up assessments, right, you're able to come in and literally click on a drop down and choose your preferred um, applicant tracking system. I always think to when we have new clients come in and um, you know the implementation process is fairly very easy until it comes to the conversation of integration. And we always hear this sense of panic and fear uh, and clients are ready to put all their resources at 
um, this this project of integration. And then there's that sense of relief when we when we tell them, you know what, we it's 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 as easy as setting it up. Just 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 click and point. Uh, although this might look a little different depending on which ATS you partner with, uh, we have put great efforts into making sure you have the ability to integrate your assessments to your ATS down from um, months and weeks um, within a matter of hours. Um, not only does this empower you, it helps you focus on what your uh, next internal processes look like because the complexity is really taken out of the process. Yeah, and this is Victoria. I'd like to share uh, a recent client experience from actually going through our new integration. Um, <clears throat> So, and I think the big the big piece around this too is how can we make it easy? Like I, we keep hearing and you all told us that it's overly complicated or it can be to do an integration. And my role is to make things as easy as possible for clients. So um, as Tim mentions, we have a super easy drop down point and click interface to, in, to integrate outmatch assessment with um, our ATS partners. So one of my clients has been using us for years and years on a number of our platforms, and we've recently gone through the change management of moving them over to Outmatch Assessment for their hourly restaurant roles. Um, she gave me a call. She is an HR professional. She wears a lot of hats. She was in the middle of doing uh, a new payroll system implementation as well as open enrollment. And lo and behold, she's now going to also have to put her recruiting hat on because she has an open position at corporate. So we had recently added corporate hiring to some of the positions they were running assessments for because in Outmatch Assessment, we have a library of jobs that you can choose assessments for. And in the matter of 10 minutes, we were on the phone chatting, we walked through, we added, it was a, it was a marketing role, we added that marketing assessment type into our account together. Uh, we created the job code, which is Outmatch Speak for uh, the integration code to have that assessment go live in her applicant tracking system. She plugged it in and she was all set. Um, and I just want to share that because her feedback was um, not, she's accustomed to using assessments, right, across um, some of these hourly volume roles, but having the option to be able to add that in for an unexpected, unforeseen hiring need and having that added ability to identify whether or not candidates were a strong match for the job was, has been super helpful for her ever since. Great stories and, and uh, good examples of how we can make this integration process easier. We know it's important. So some of the key takeaways here that uh, Tim and Victoria just talked about, um, the ways that new technology can make the integration process easier. Um, keep these in mind as you're talking to your vendors or talking to Outmatch about integration. Some of the things that you may find that may lessen the stress of this process are um, companies that are focused on shortening that integration window. Right, Tim talked about taking that integration timeline down from weeks or months to minutes. Um, other things to look out for, self-managed process, those updates that need to be made or, or managing your integration. Look for vendors that are focused on this. Um, also, look for vendors that have certified standard integrations. Um, Outmatch has all three of these things, right? So with the release of Bridge, what Tim and Victoria were describing through their client stories are the benefits that um, these improvements and technology can bring to the integration process, uh, bring benefits to our clients and our partner vendors as well. Very helpful information, thank you. All right, so that, uh, that's the end of our structured questions. We can go ahead and take a look uh, at what questions the audience has for us. If you need clarification or if you have any questions, again, go to that GoToWebinar window, um, use that questions drop down. you can type to us, um, and we can get as many questions answered while we still have time. Anything that needs follow-up, we'll be sure to answer those questions uh, as well offline. Okay, um, so I will take back over here. Um, this is Charles here. Um, so I do have a handful of questions that came in. Um, and the first one here, um, I'm actually gonna address it to you, Tim. Um, what ATSs do you integrate with? 
So which, which ATS is this outcome yeah. assessment integrated? No, with? very good question. So um, we integrate with a lot of great partners, ATS partners, and uh, the list is pretty long. What I'll uh, recommend is reach out to Charles, and he can certainly send you a list of all our ATS partners that we um, uh, partner with. Um, and and I, I think that's you'll be pretty excited to know who we who all we uh, partner with from my ATS perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, shoot me an email at csummers at outmatch.com. I can get you the full the full listing of those those ATS partners that we that we integrate with. Um, second question coming in here. Um, and it's it's around uh, selling kind of selling internally um, to management. Um, what the importance of an integration is. Um, and so what piece of advice would you give to somebody that's trying to kind of sell internally um, the importance of an integration? So maybe one or two key things um, to get you through that. Yeah, so this is Victoria. So I think, I think a lot of this will go back to what Alicia mentioned since she was sort of our feet on the street example of what it's like to be a recruiter and trying to save time. Um, my big piece of advice if you're trying to sell an integrated assessment to your upper management or to your direct manager or your organization to have that is going to be talking about the hours and time it's going to save for both recruiters and hiring managers actually. So if you think about just efficiency and if you want to tie a number to it and determine the number of hours you're going to save by having that integration and having hiring recommendations right there within the applicant tracking system, I think that's gonna help you significantly, as well as, um, I also think of an example, we have, um, Outmatch Assessment has interview guides to help guide hiring managers through the interview process as they are um, maybe first time interviewers or someone who's not used to interviewing for hiring, and that's something they would be able to access through an ETS integration as well in a place they go every day. Great, thank you. Um, all right, so moving on here, I've got two more questions. Um, I'm gonna open this one up to the entire group here of our panelists. Um, what unforeseen problems might pop up during the integration that will extend, extend the time it takes to integrate? What do I need to watch out for? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll jump in here, this is Tim. Uh, in my head, I was thinking I need a pen and paper and you need about two hours so I can list out all the issues that might come up. Uh, and, and I know the question is unforeseen. Um, I, I think um, from, I alluded to scope earlier, right? Um, and I think that's kind of been pointing where um, the issues might arise from, uh, from a foundational perspective. So uh, changing scope is not a bad thing, uh, I think as you learn about the capabilities of an integration or the partner that you're working with, you realize what can and cannot be done. So you'll have to change your scope accordingly. However, um, you'll have to control how much that scope changes. So this is really talking about it from a high level perspective. It can be any number of things. You're so involved in the project that you don't realize your scope shifting. And all of a sudden you're ways away from what your ultimate goal was when you when you have your requirements gathering, so that that's something I would say that people don't uh, really realize until maybe sometimes it's too late. Thanks, Tim. Um, last question here is just on whether or not the slides will be built, uh, sent out after the webinar. So um, yeah, so there's actually a, a, an email that'll go out here in about 30 minutes from right now um, that will include the slides um, as well as that free piece of content. Um, on predictive analytics that we that we talked about earlier in the in the presentation. So um, yes, to, to answer your question, you'll get the slides here in just a, a few minutes. So um, that brings us to the end of the question and answer portion of our presentation. So I will move on to the, the very last slide here. So I just want to thank you all for attending today's panel discussion on integrating an assessment with your ATS. Uh, in our next webcast, we're joined by Martin Lanick, author of the new book, The Leader Habit. Martin, Martin and talent expert Sarah Glass will team up to share the leader habit formula for infusing leadership development into everyday work life and provide a primer on using predictive analytics to close behavioral gaps and achieve leadership success. So I hope to see you all again next month. 
If you'd like to, if you'd like to listen back uh, to any of our previous webinars, please go to outmatch.com backslash webinars, or you can always shoot me an email at csummers at outmatch.com. Uh, once again, thank you for joining. We'll see you next time.